How did we get from this to this? The way Android and other Google products look is about to change in a big way. The third age of material design has arrived, characterized by bold typography, expressive shapes and colors, and new physics-based animations. And folks are already saying that Android has gone full Gen Z. So as the era of Material 3 Expressive arrives, it's time to take a look back on how Material started all those years ago with the peak millennial design language of Material 1.0, how it's evolved over the years, and how its latest incarnation sets the stage for the way Google's apps and services will look going into the 2030s. Let's jump in. Google hasn't always had a unified design language. In the early 2010s, it'd be different whether you were using Gmail on the web, Chrome on Windows, or Android on your phone. Back then, Android sported its own futuristic hollow theme, which I'll still insist has aged a lot better than many other UI skins of that same era. But Holo was only ever really an Android thing. If you used Google products on other platforms, it looked nothing like this. Holo was the work of design guru Matthias Duarte, who joined Android from Palm and eventually became design lead for the whole of Google. That period from 2012 to 2013 saw interface design finally move on from the skeuomorphic trend that had been around since the early days of macOS's Aqua and Windows Vista's Aero. So naturally, Google had to move with the times, leading to this presentation at the Google I.O. conference in 2014. What if there was an intelligent material that was as simple as paper, but could transform and change shape in response to touch? And this led us to a way of thinking that we call material design. The first material design was big, bold, and ambitious. Arguably a little too ambitious, considering how little of this original vision Google ended up being able to bring to Android and Chrome initially. But nevertheless, the highly geometric look, distinct layers with shadows and bold color palettes defined the Google look of the early 2010s. And this early sizzle reel and polished presentation seriously impressed with slick linking animations that we really hadn't seen before. Okay, okay, I guess you could argue that this focus on animation was a key component of the ill-fated Windows Phone as early as 2011, and Apple of course had little flourishes like the bounce back animation for scrolling way back in 2007, but the digital paper interface that Google debuted was the first where every part of the UI really felt alive with animation. By 2013, low-powered devices like phones actually had the graphical horsepower to pull this off, and the mobile web had progressed to the point where you could actually recreate these animations there too. As Google's promo visuals showed, the idea was for material to persist across Android phones, tablets, Chromebooks, wearables, and the desktop. But material design soon ran up against the limitations of the real world, especially the messy world of Android of that era. Google finally had a unifying design language, but individual apps were owned and developed by their own teams, each with their own set of priorities and unique interpretations of the material design rules. It also didn't help that everyone was working towards a pretty tight deadline to ship material versions of these apps to coincide with the launch of Android 5 Lollipop in the fall of 2014. The result of all this was a much more reserved interpretation of material design actually debuting on the Nexus 6 phone and Nexus 9 tablet that winter. The OS itself felt like a big change, but individual Google apps sometimes felt like a paper-thin material layer atop their familiar Android 4 iterations. Nevertheless, Google was committed to this new design direction, eventually using it as the basis for its current sans serif logo, which debuted in September 2015. At the same time, the material upgrade for Google's web apps was a significantly longer haul than might have been expected, a chore of a development process that saw many apps like Calendar and Gmail not being fully done with their material refresh until 2017 or 18. And although Google imposed stricter design rules on Android phone manufacturers with material design than they had previously with Holo, if your phone was made by someone besides Google or Motorola, chances are you wouldn't really see much material influence shining through, an evergreen problem for Google when it comes to the way its OS looks on third-party hardware. If you squint at a Samsung phone at that time, you can kind of see bits and pieces of material design in places, but it is mostly superficial. Still, around that time, key modern building blocks for Google Apps across all platforms were starting to become visible. Floating action buttons for common functions like starting a new message or adding a contact. And hamburger menus sliding out from left to right served as a bookmark spot for the main parts of an app. Both, of course, continue to be part of Google's design language today. 
Material design wasn't set in stone though, nor was it meant to be. As Google moved away from the Nexus partnership and towards its own Pixel branded phones, those devices got their own unique look and feel, pushing bright blue and white Google branding over the more diverse palette of previous years. And by 2020, things were starting to stagnate. Much of the original vision of material design back in that 2014 sizzle reel was a distant memory. Google's own apps on smartphones were increasingly uniform. Its tablet ambitions had faltered, briefly pivoting back to Chrome OS for that form factor, and the materialization of its web apps had turned into a multi-year slog. It was time for Google, Android, and its other platforms to get a splash of color once again. And that next step in material design's evolution came in 2021, where in the midst of a global pandemic, another slick presentation showcased the Google look and feel for the 2020s. Designer Matthias Duarte was back with a refreshed wardrobe and a new design language for the whole of Google at I.O. 2021. This was Material U, and it addressed the chronic lack of color that had gradually crept into Android and Google's other properties over the years. Material U made the entire interface, both the OS and your apps, more personal by pulling in key colors and key complementary colors from your chosen wallpaper. Material U did more than just copy paste a blue or green hue from your background though. More muted colors would be used for background elements, while saturated punchy hues would be used for accent colors. Instead of Google Blue, we imagined Material U, a new design that includes you as a co-creator by generating personal material palettes that mix color science with a designer's eye. Now, in some ways, even calling this new look material is a bit of a misnomer. There was no more digital paper effect, and the heavy layering and sharp corners of Material 1.0 was nowhere to be seen here, consigned to that same design dustbin that all that skeuomorphic stuff was jettisoned into circa 2014. Instead, Material U leaned heavily on big, bold typography and softer corners with wider radiuses. Widgets were retooled to be less angular, often featuring whimsical, googly shapes. There were fewer hamburger menus and more of these iPhone-style bottom navigation buttons. The whole thing was built more around abstract digital surfaces as opposed to trying to mimic the behavior of real paper and card in a 3D space. And its levels of personalization grew as Material U developed further in 2022 and 23, with more options for the lock screen clock and finer tuning for the level of vibrance used in those accent colors. On Pixel phones, the proprietary Google Sans font was used throughout, as opposed to the open source Roboto that dated back to the early 2010s, a move that foreshadowed the likes of Samsung and OnePlus moving to their own custom typefaces later in the 2020s. And Material U was a stronger and more opinionated design language that landed right alongside Android 12 and the Pixel 6, the series' big return to the high-end big screen phone space that jump-started the recent success that Pixel devices have enjoyed. But in many ways, Google faced similar issues getting device manufacturers to incorporate Material U into their products. Samsung phones kind of have their own take on Material U with their own customizable color schemes, but that took another year to arrive after Android 12, and other manufacturers' takes were pretty anemic, at least in the early days of Android 12 and Android 13. One thing that can be seen throughout Material U, though, is a doubling down on animations, especially in later versions like Android 13 and 14. The animations to lock and unlock your device receive particular attention, with fingerprint security effects blooming into your full home screen. The Material U era was a period of relative stability and polish in Google's design story. Android 12L followed for larger form factor devices like tablets in mid-2022, revamping the experience with better windowing and taskbar support. And that led to Google getting back into the tablet game with the home-centric Pixel tablet in 2023. Android tablets still weren't going to dethrone the iPad, but then tablets generally were a harder sell in the 2020s, and the Pixel tablet's launch price of $399 in the US was more palatable than earlier offerings. What's more, the move to port web apps to Material U proceeded more quickly, with many of the main ones having gotten their new look by the end of 2022. Material U spread its influence over the Google ecosystem much more quickly than its predecessor. Yet if you look at a Google app today, especially if it lives on an Android phone or tablet, chances are you'll see they've mostly fallen into the same uniform look that's functional but not quite as dynamic and whimsical as what we saw in that original 2021 Material U video. And so for the next generation of Material, Google shifted gears to make things expressive. 
Material 3 Expressive isn't a complete overhaul of Google's design language. It's still obviously built on top of the bones of Material U, but it is the biggest visual change since 2021 and should set the direction for the way all Google products are going to look going into the 2030s. It's coming with the first quarterly update for Android 16, which should line up right around the Pixel 10 launch in August. Look at Google's promo reel for Material 3, and it's clear they're leaning into a much bolder, contrasty palette this time around, as opposed to just going with the hues based on your wallpaper. Google says wallpaper color theming isn't going away, but the colors used in apps will be richer with some semantic colors that won't change based on your color scheme. And UI colors can be picked from in-app content as well, which is something Google's been talking about going all the way back to the original material design in 2014. Bottom line is that Google seems to be pushing back against the fairly conservative wallpaper-based color palettes of old, in the same way Material U rebelled against apps that were drifting towards the old Google blue color scheme back in the day. Whimsical shapes with wide corner radiuses have been part of Material since 2021, and while home screen widgets have showcased a variety of styles, apps themselves have mostly fallen back on circular or pill-shaped controls. Material 3 Expressive brings more geometric diversity, with a range of wobbly, spiky, and sometimes even pixelated cutouts that you can expect to be used to frame content within your apps. Again, you can see a few examples of these in the Sizzle Reel and Google's documentation. It remains to be seen how well this will translate into actual apps. Animations are one area where you can already see the expressive element in Google's design language in the latest Android betas. The new notification shade gives real weight and motion to alerts, sliders, and other UI elements. Looking at Google's design guidelines, expressive is all about making things bouncier and springier, as UI elements change shape, toggle switch on and off, and lists pop into place. It's all a bit more livelier than your standard touch interface. Meanwhile, the new blurred backgrounds for notifications and the task switcher aren't revolutionary, see Samsung and Apple there, but do help to visually separate things on screen, which is one of the design goals of Expressive. While Material Design was all Roboto and Material U switched up to widespread use of Google Sans, Material 3 has a much wider selection of fonts, especially for titles, key data readouts, and other areas where they're intended to be impactful and unique looking. But even elsewhere in Google's design deck, it's much less of a monotypographic affair. It kind of mirrors some recent trends in web design and publishing. Right now, most of Google's communications around Material 3 Expressive have to do with Android, which makes sense with the design system likely to debut first on Pixel 10 phones this summer. It remains to be seen, though, how this design language will be adapted for desktop and web apps, which are more utilitarian and where there's often less wiggle room for visual flair. Gmail and Calendar and Drive, for example, are pretty functional apps that you don't necessarily want to be super individualized and expressive and bouncy. When you're writing an email or tweaking a spreadsheet, information density matters in a way it might not if you're just looking at a list of alarms or scrolling through a deck of photos. And that's perhaps my one biggest criticism of what Google's shown so far of Material 3 Expressive. Look at these screenshots and information density and easy glanceability seems to have been fed into a wood chipper in favor of bright colors, bouncy shapes, and goofy fonts. Of course, time will tell how the real world implementation actually shakes out. Once again, the really key challenge of how to get device makers and third-party app developers on board with Material 3 Expressive remains. Google arguably made some progress in this area with Material U, but it was slow and many big name apps and services preferred to keep their own consistent look across all the various platforms. With Material 3, Google is pushing really hard with the idea that expressive designs can help apps and services to be viewed as cool, modern, and even rebellious, especially by Gen Z folks. But if Google ever succeeds in its goal to get everyone using expressive designs, would they still be rebellious? Would they still be cool? Maybe if and when we get to that point, it'll be time for Material 4 with UI designed around Gen Alpha, whatever that might possibly look like. I'm not quite ready to go full-on geriatric millennial here and say Gen Z has ruined Google's products. After all, I don't remember anyone despairing that Android had gone full millennial back in the 2010s. Okay, apparently some folks were saying that back then, but not as many as seem to be hitting back against Material 3 right now. Gen Z trends in software design are a whole different rabbit hole that we could go down. It certainly seems to be true that the overly clean visuals of the past decade in software can be viewed as dull, clinical, and boring by younger generations. And you could view Material 3 Expressive as an effort to get in ahead of that. 
But I really don't think what Google is showing here is all that excessive. The sizzle reel, after all, is intended to shine a spotlight on Material 3's differences compared to earlier versions. And if you read Google's actual design guidelines, there are ways to be expressive without making your app look like a cluster headache of colors and fonts. Material 3 Expressive feels like less of a revolution than either Material U or the OG Material Design were when they debuted. That's not a bad thing given how mature and stable Android in particular and other Google products more generally now are. And if we don't see another Google Design overhaul until the 2030s, that won't necessarily be a bad thing. So hit the comments let me know what you think of Google's design journey over the past 11 plus years, whether you're looking forward to a more expressive future, and where things might be headed in Material 4 further down the line. Stick around and subscribe for more retrospective stuff like this, but in the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.